What's up, worshippers? Sea Raptor here with another week and another scuttlebutt. Thanks for hanging out here with me on YouTube. Appreciate you guys watching. So, what's going on this week? Well, third round of public testing of patch 0.8.0 is live right now as we speak. As you're watching this, if you want, you can go log into public test and try out the new CV mechanics that are now less than a week away from deploying here in World of Warships. And went live this past Tuesday. You've got all weekend left still to test it. It runs through Monday morning. Uh, give it a go, guys. I, I highly encourage you to go over there and test. Um, AA seems to be improved from previous versions. I know one of the, I think one of the second round of testings, they were people were kind of kvetching about uh, AA still feels weak and flak is super easy to dodge. Um, everybody said drive, just drive around the flak, man. I tell you, I tried this out for the first time on Tuesday night. It ain't that easy. Uh, you will end up driving through flak sooner or later. So, uh, and flak hurts. So AA power is, is much, uh, much increased over what I think it was in previous divisions. And I say, I think it was because I never played any of this until Tuesday night on my stream. I sat down, I logged in for the first time and I started playing the new carrier mechanics. And the reason I waited a little bit was I wanted them to put some polish on it and at least take a couple of rounds of, of balancing at it. And then I wanted to try it out. So I sat down on Tuesday, did that live on stream. I did two games in uh, Tier 4 Langley to try the low-tier carrier experience. We've said on the channel, we talked about it, Farazeleth, other CCs have all talked about it, that the low-tier CV experience needs to be fun. And I got to say, guys, I enjoyed it. Tier 4 covers all of the bases. It gives you one, of each, one squadron of each plane type. You have attack planes with rockets torpedo bombers, and dive bombers. There are no fighter consumables at Tier 4, so you don't have to worry about, whoa, why are my planes all dying all of a sudden? It gives you the chance to get in, drive your carrier, fly planes around, learn how everything works. Um, so in my mind, at least the Tier 4 part is is very in a very, very good place right now, just based on my, my two quick games. Um, I spent most of my, the rest of my time in testing, playing the premium CVs. The, com the community contributors were given access to the four premium carriers on test in their new versions. I played, I played games in Kaga, Enterprise, and Graf Zeppelin. I'll put a link in my stream in case you want to go watch any of this stuff and, and, and look at what we saw. But um, basically, Kaga's gimmick is, you know, Kaga's gimmick right now in live is she has low tier planes, but she has huge, ridiculous plane reserves. They've kind of carried that over. Her gimmick in, in the new mechanics is she has a huge plane res, planes, uh, reserves of planes on her deck, which means that unlike most other CVs, she can launch full strikes of the same type of plane back to back. So if you want to try and swamp an opponent with just tons of torpedo squadrons, tons of torpedo planes, you can do that on Kaga. There is a cost. It will take her longer to reload after you. Let's say you get both those squadrons blown away. It'll take a while for those planes to come back on deck, but she has a lot of them available just sitting around waiting for you to launch. So that's really interesting. I really enjoyed my time at Enterprise. I played one game in Enterprise. Just a very solid ship all around. We did some examining between Enterprise and Lexington, like what are the differences? Um, her pl Enterprise planes have slightly less health. Of course, on live, presently, Enterprise's planes are almost all Tier 7 aircraft, and I think this is their way of kind of kind of giving a little nod to that. So her planes overall has less, he less health. They reload faster, but um, she has more reserves on her deck than Lexington does, and her planes reload faster. She also is the only American carrier that comes with armor-piercing bombs, which is notable. Um, all the Japanese carriers come with armor-piercing bombs, but... All the American carriers in the tech tree only come right now with high explosive bombs. I found Graf Zeppelin to be a very odd ship. Right now, Graf Zeppelin on live is super trolly. I love her, her, her uh, 203 configuration with fighters and AP bombers. She retains the AP bombs and the, and the perfectly circular drop reticle, which, which makes them very user-friendly. You don't have to necessarily concern yourself with approaching your target ship from one end to the other. So that is still the same. Her torpedo drop is really, really bizarro. Of course, on live, Graf Zeppelin has a five-plane five torpedo squadron with this kind of cross thing. You drop three torpedoes in line with, and then two flankers. Her torpedo drop in in test right now is is super wonky. I think I think they're gonna have to do something. I almost never landed torpedoes with it. Admittedly, I am a noob struggling with the new mechanics, 
but I really struggled with her torpedo drop. I feel like my gut tells me it needs tweaking. Um, maybe I need to put in some more games and see if it's not user error. It very well could be. I did get a chance to play Saipan. There's a couple people out there that have got videos on her. I believe Notzer and Farazelith both have got videos on Saipan, so check those out if you're interested. Saipan's gimmick, like right now on live, she has higher tier planes. She's a tier 7 carrier with tier 9 planes. Very similar in, in the CDM rework. What they're doing is that Saipan's squadrons and uh, available reserves on deck are much smaller, but her planes have a tremendous amount of health. So in theory, they're they're tougher to kill. Um, so it's not totally unlike what she has now. But anyway, guys, get out there, test these lines. Um, the only way we're gonna get we're gonna get better and, and make sure we iron out as much as we can before this goes live is is if we get more more data and more feedback and more testing because it's coming. Really excited to see today on YouTube and Twitch on the main World of Warships Twitch and their YouTube streaming. Um, uh, the EU guys, Conway and Tucci, uh, were joined uh, via satellite link uh, by Earl uh, Earl Gray and Vessery from St. Petersburg. They they took and answered uh, a tremendous amount of questions on the rework, what's happening, why it's happening, why are certain decisions being made. It was a very, very good stream, I felt. Twitch chat, I was in Twitch chat for probably about 45 minutes, just kind of keeping an eye on it while I was at work. And... Uh, it was pretty contentious. There's a lot of people out there. Intention, uh, emotions, let's say, are very high. There's a lot of people out there with a very passionate, very strong opinion of the rework, what is what is coming. Um, and um, so that's worth a watch. And also some of the answers they, they gave were really good, I thought. Um, we did get a taste for the first time of British aircraft carrier gameplay. We had previously seen the ship spoiled at what uh, Wargaming Fest in, uh, in late December and... In, in Russia, but this is the first time we've seen these these ships on the board in action. We saw Conway play games in Tier 10 Audacious and Tier 8 Implacable. Um, the British gimmick, and they talk about this a little bit on the stream, appears to be primarily their dive bombers. When you play the American British and American British carrier, sorry, the American and Japanese carriers, and then Graf Zeppelin, the dive bomber the dive bomber mechanics are very odd. The timing of, of the bombers going up and then coming back down and how the reticle lines up for all of that. To me, that right now, that's the most challenging part of learning aircraft carriers is learning the timing that takes to get dive bombers down. But the British gimmick right now, watching, watching Conway play, looks super easy because they're not dive bombers. They're, they're, he called them level bombers. Um, and essentially what they do is... They have a elongated reticle, like if you're used to seeing Enterprise's uh, bomber aiming reticle, you know what that looks like. It's very similar, but they don't go up and come down. That reticle stays very, very static almost, very easy to use, guide onto your target, and then drop your bombs and do solid damage out of your bombers. So the British carriers right now look like their dive bombers are very user-friendly, their torpedo bombers are very solid, and their rocket planes or maybe their attack fighters are maybe a little on the weak side. That's the first impression I got from the few games that I watched. But anyway, guys, I'll put the video in the uh, in the links below and in some of the notes. Go check that out and uh, and and watch for yourself and draw your own conclusions. And if nothing else, if you're if you're just keeping up with all of the CV changes, it's worth watching to see what it is they're talking about. More CV news, of course. There is um, a noteworthy survey that I want to bring to everybody's attention, okay? EU, EU community contributor Flam Bass, one of the larger Twitch streamers, uh, is running his own CV survey. And I think his, his expectation is when he's done running this survey, he's going to share the results of what he's generated with Wargaming. I'm going to put the link below. If you, if you, if you're very, again, if you're invested in this topic, uh, I highly, highly encourage you to go check out that survey. Click the link Click the survey. Uh, the link will take you to a Reddit post, and then the Reddit post will have a link to the survey. Go check that out. Vote. And, and this is just another way for us to communicate with Wargaming. We like it. We don't like it. We have tried it. We haven't tried it. All data is valid, right? Um, and as long as you're asking, I have not looked at the survey myself. I cannot attest to the fact that he's asking the right kinds of questions. I hope he is. But as long as you're you're framing the responses you're getting uh, properly in the sense of the, the first few questions on the survey are going to be, have you tried new CVs? Have you tried old CVs? You know, to kind of, so that you frame up the, the, the player's experience and then you start asking them what they like, what they don't like, then the results can be very meaningful. So uh, so give, it, give that a shot. Either way, I suspect that result will be going to Wargaming. And guys, whether we like it or not, this is coming, right? This is going to be on us in, by the time you see this video, less than a week, right? Patch day is Wednesday, 30 January, unless something just horribly, horribly falls apart, which I don't foresee right now. So uh, it's coming. 
Last big news of the week for me, at least uh, for what I do around here in my my funkified CC hat, is that we've announced n dates for the next round of tournaments here on the North American server. First up will be War Games 4. For those of you that are familiar with uh, the tournaments that we ran last year, you'll remember the War Games series that we ran over the, over the end of the summer, July, August, and September. Those tournaments were designed to be preparation for King of the Sea 7, which then ran in October and November. We had uh, several teams participate in, in those events. Uh, some very big success stories. South American clan Buenos Noches, probably being our biggest success story, started playing in, uh, in uh, War, War Games 1, I believe, and then all the, went all the way to the top eight in King of the Sea when it finally rolled around in November. So as far as I'm concerned, like those tournaments, uh, you know, mission accomplished. And uh, we're trying to do something very similar. Again, we're trying to get one of these in before King of the Sea. So what we're doing is on Saturday, the 9th of February, that's in about two weeks, we're going to run a, a King of the Sea style tournament here on North America. It will be a one day event, nice and simple, right? We have not fixed the format yet. We will probably run five rounds of Swiss with a cut to top two or a cut to top four. We're still debating that internally. When we finally make the announcements and have link sign up links, we'll have all that settled. But it is definitely going to be a bunch of Swiss rounds, best of one Swiss rounds. We're trying to gather as much data as we can because the, what we're doing is, for those of you that are familiar with the King of the Sea format, it, traditionally it's 99, two battleships max, one carrier max, tier 10. We're, re, we're retaining most of that. We're going 9v9, yes, tier 10, yes, one carrier max, yes, but we're no longer restricting you to two battleships. What we're saying is that carrier slot, you're restricted to three Bat three capital ships. The carrier slot is now a flex slot. If you want to play three battleships and no carrier, you can. If you want to play two battleships and one carrier, you can. We're giving teams that option. And we're trying this because what we're seeing the, with the way the, the carrier mechanics are changing is that it feels like carriers are going to have less of an impact than they do right now. We could be full of crap. We don't honestly know. That's the point. That's one of the reasons we're running this event. So we're not, because of that, because this is meant to be a, a data gathering, let's all come play, have fun, shoot ships, and, and hopefully see how this works, we're not putting any restrictions on who can enter. Previous war games had restrictions on, on which teams could sign up. We're not doing that again. We want everybody who's interested in trying out this format to come play, regardless of your experience level. If you're brand new, come on. If you're ZR and you're a previous champion, or 07 and you're a previous champion, come on and play. We want you guys to show up. Registration should open soon. Prize, that'll have prize announcement with it. Prize announcements with it. We're still fine tuning those details with Wargaming, but it all should be coming out next week for sign up. So keep an eye on that. And of course, lastly, the big the big announcement: King of the C8 is returning to North America, as you would expect, and is coming very soon in early March. Swiss stage. We're going to start with a, a Swiss stage here on a Sunday, a Sunday the third of March. That will be day one. The Swiss stage at the beginning allows us to no longer restrict the number of teams that want to sign up. Historically, we've had to cap it at 32, reg 32 entries, and then we had our eight seated teams, and life went on from there. What the switch stage allows us to do is basically say every single team that wants to come play King of the Sea can sign up on North America, and we will play day. You will at least you're guaranteed to play day one. Day two will be the group stage on Saturday, 9 March, the following weekend, followed immediately the following Sunday, the 10th, by the elimination stage. On the end of that Sunday, we'll know at least our top four teams. Hopefully, maybe top eight. I'm not quite sure yet. We're, we're again, we're honing this in, right? And then the finals will be on Saturday, the 16th of March. We believe that we're going to be going back to Austin to do the cast like we have for the last two King of the Seas here on North America to do the finals cast at Wargaming in Austin. Not final yet, but that is that is the that is our tentative plans. Again, I'm still working on ironing all that out with Radar X and the community team in Austin, but probably will be happening. To cap that all off, the Grand Finals will be against the Southeast Asia server, a rematch of the guys that we faced after King of the Sea Supremacy last summer, and that will be on Saturday, the 30th of March. We're not going to be able to run anything on that Saturday in between, which is the 23rd, because that day is the big finals for the Russia, uh, Russia King of the Sea bracket, European King of the Sea bracket, and their cross-server event. All of that is being cast live from St. Petersburg, um, and they're going to have the channel tied up pretty much all day. So uh, not basically, there's, there's almost no way for us to run um, a grand finals with Asia without some planning because of the time differences. We're like 14 hours off of Singapore or something insane. So 
those two weeks in between give us time to get everything in order, get the press account set up, make sure we got our time zones correct, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, so that we put on a better event on, on, that, on that Saturday. So I hope you guys will, if you're interested in playing, please, please, please sign up and come play. And if you just want to watch, that's cool too. This game in the background, just a Hindenburg game that I had over the holidays. This one was from a few weeks ago. One of my better Hindenburg games in a while. I think this is the game I knocked my Hindenburg snowflake off on. Yeah, I ended up dying. I did some stupid crap here at the end. I was like, oh, I'll drive my, my massive hay cruiser in the middle of the map to get shot to crap by Musashi. But uh, the team did eventually win the game, and I had a pretty good game with uh, an arsonist and a whole boatload of damage out of it. So it was, uh, it was, it was a fun time. All right, guys, that's it for the week. Um, keep tuned, and we'll be here, of course, every week with more Scuttlebutt. I've still got more videos coming, I hope. Um, and um, anyways, I'm not sure what that schedule is going to look like, but I will see you guys next time. Take care until then.